Today on Mr. Tesalonian, we're going to use our Creality K1C to print out a working model of a Tromp air compressor. A Tromp is a very old design for a working air compressor that has no moving parts. They used to use these to power huge steel foundries way back in the day. Instead of having guys actually moving bellows back and forth to pump the air into the foundries, they'd actually have something like this sitting there nearby with a water flow going into it that would provide the compressed air into the coal bed which would heat up the charcoal enough so they could actually smelt down the metals to produce steel or other kinds of metals in the foundries in the old days. And What you see here is a model I just put together on Tinkercad. We're going to go ahead and bring it over to the Creality K1C here in a moment. Print out all the parts. We're going to assemble the machine. We'll bring it outside, hook it up to a water flow and give it a quick test. Now this little unit that we're printing today it's not going to provide a ton of compressed air. It's a very small unit. Maybe in the shot there you can tell that this side over here is just a little bit higher than this side over here. This is going to be our input side and this is going to be the output side of our tromp. Uh, right up here on the top of our input side you'll notice there's a little hole right here. That is actually the air straw where the air itself is going to be drawn into the system. So water flow is going to come in this way. It's going to fall down this pipe and inside of here, if I go ahead and make this uh, clear, we can see that this has a little straw in there. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. You can see right there, there's a straw coming down through here. It actually goes down through this pipe a little ways. I'll actually make that clear so you can see it. So there you go. You can actually see the air input straw. The water flow is going to come in right here. It's going to drop down this pipe. And as it's going by the straw, it's going to create basically a venturi effect, a draw against that tube, which will pull air in from the top and bring it down into the water flow itself. As the water falls down into the bottom down here, it's going to enter into this lower tank. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it a little bit. Water flow enters into this tank. The air is actually going to be liberated from the water up here in the top end of the tank. Now if I make that tank clear, we can see what we've got going on in there. You'll notice here over on this side, there's actually a tube that's reaching down towards the very bottom of the tank. That's the water output. The area that you see here up at the top of the tank above where the water output is going to be is where the air is going to be liberated from the water that's coming down our input tube. It will be separated from the water. It will get deposited into this area here. The water itself will actually come out and go up through this tube and back out into the stream flow. The air is going to enter into this tank right here. And that tank is basically going to be our compressed air tank. And that will deliver that air out through this output tube right here at the top up into our system wherever you want to use your compressed air. There was just a quick showing of what a tromp looks like, how it works. We're going to go ahead and pull this model apart. I'll send it all over to the Creality K1C. We're going to print out all the parts. We'll assemble the little unit. We'll bring it outside and give it a quick test just to see how well it works. We downloaded all the parts that we created on Tinkercad onto the computer. Right now I've got Creality Slicer open. Let's go ahead and grab our first piece here. Start with the tromp bottom separator tank. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look at it, make sure everything looks fine. It's sitting on the build plate. Okay, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and pick out our material. We don't need ABS for this, so let's go ahead and pick out something else. I think Hyper PLA will be just fine for this project, so we're going to switch over to PLA. Let's go down here to our material strength, and let's go to, instead of two outside wall perimeters, we're going to go to four outside wall perimeters. Let's go down to infill. Instead of 15%, we're going to go ahead and do 100% infill since this is working with water and I want it to seal really well. Um, next, we're going to go down to supports. All right, so we've got some ports enabled. Uh, we've got snug supports as the style, which is something I really like to use. It doesn't waste a lot of material. We shouldn't have to change anything else on the supports. That should be just fine. Let's go ahead and slice this and see how long it's going to take. All right, so we're done slicing here. Let's see how long it's going to take. It's going to take four hours, 14 minutes. It's going to use 112 grams of material. Real quickly here, let's go ahead and turn it around just a little bit, make sure all the supports are going to be where we're going to want them. Looks like we got supports inside of both of the tubes and we've got a support column here going between the two tubes to make sure they print correctly. We're going to start printing out the parts for our Tromp. We're going to use the Creality K1C to do this. Let's go down to our menu here and let's see. We've got a Tromp air tank, Tromp bottom tank. Let's go ahead and print our air tank first. And there we go. All right, so once we're done printing all the parts, I'll put them all together here for you on camera so you can see what it looks like to assemble the Tromp. And then we're going to bring it outside and give it a quick test. All right, guys, we got all of our parts printed so we can assemble our 3D printed Tromp. But before we get going, I want to tell you guys just a little bit about myself. 
So one of the things you may not know about me is that I travel constantly. I drive between the Midwest and the West Coast a couple times every single month. That's a 40 hour drive each way and I do that a few times a month and I have to tell you something about that drive has really been killing me. It's been putting my back out, it's been putting my hips out. And let me show you what that is. Right here I've got this giant oversized, overly thick wallet that I've been carrying in my right back pocket for years. And I can tell you what, I am having a hard time walking when I get done with those drives. My back is just killing me. I can tell something's really wrong with this. Today, thanks to Ridge Wallet, I can go ahead and throw that wallet away because I've got the new Ridge front pocket wallet right here. I've got it in gunmetal gray, as you can see. This gunmetal gray color fits me perfectly, kind of matches what I typically wear. They have over 50 different colors at Ridge Wallet that you can choose from, including a leather bound, they have a Damascus steel, they have a carbon fiber, blue, green, black, any color that you kind of want, they have one of them in that color. It's one of the other nice things I like about this Ridge Wallet, especially because I travel between all these different places. I'm constantly stopping at gas stations and fast food restaurants and a lot of different places where I'm putting myself at risk for people with RFID reading technology that could be potentially trying to read the chips inside of my credit credit cards, gaining my personal information and accessing my bank account. The Ridge Wallet has an RFID blocking technology in it, so it helps block all those RFID readers, which makes me feel so much safer now when I'm traveling across the country. It's very easy to access your credit cards with the Ridge Wallet. It simply has a little notch here at the bottom. You push up on that notch, you can see all the cards pop up here at the top. Simply grab the one you want, pull it out, use it in whatever machine or whatever restaurant you're going to use it in. Simply slide it back into your wallet and you're ready to go. Pretty awesome. I've got the money clip here on the back of the Ridge Wallet that I ordered with it, which is a nice addition to the wallet because you never know which one of the gas stations in these little towns are not going to accept your credit card, so it's always handy when you're traveling to have a stash of actual cash with you. With the Ridge Wallet's money clip, you definitely have the ability to hold that cash nicely in place. It's not going to come out of there. It's very well built. So you've got cash, you've got your cards, everything's ready to go in one slim, easy to access package. I love this new Ridge wallet. Not only do you have a well-built, good-looking wallet here, but Ridge gives you a 99-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't love the wallet from the first 99 days that you own it, you can return it for a full refund. Not only that, but they have a lifetime warranty. So when you buy a Ridge wallet, and I know you're going to love it, you're going to have this wallet for the rest of your life. They're going to replace any parts that might get damaged over time. You're going to be able to have that same nice quality wallet for all the years that you're going to want to own it. Now, if you'd like to get your own Ridge wallet, Go down to the description, I've put a tag in there with the product description on there. Click on that tag, go over to Ridge Wallet, and use the promo code that I've got in the description to get another 10% off your Ridge Wallet purchase. I hope you guys have enjoyed learning more about the Ridge Wallet. I can tell you I've really enjoyed owning it, and I've really enjoyed the fact that I no longer have the back and the hip pain that I'm used to having. So let's go ahead and put that Ridge Wallet right back where it belongs. Let's get back to assembling our Tromp. So let's go ahead and start assembling our trump. We're going to start out by using the separation tank here and one of our tubes that we've got. These are the longer tubes for the input and the output. We're going to go ahead and add some super glue to everything to kind of glue them into place. Let's go ahead and open up our super glue. We're going to add a ring of super glue to one of our tubes right here. Stick that down into the output hole on our main separation tank. All right, that looks good. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and Stick that down here into the output hole of our trump. There we go. We've now got our output tube hooked into the separation tank, ready to go on that. Now that we've got the glue on that, let's go ahead and put a little cardboard box up here. We'll set that up against there. Give that just a moment to kind of set the glue into place for us. It will stay there. Let's go ahead and grab our other tube here. We're going to glue one of our elbows onto the bottom end of that tube, just like this. So a good thing that fits. Let's go ahead and add some glue to it. Alright, there we go, we got some glue on there. Let's go ahead and stick that down into the elbow, just like that. There we go. Let's go ahead and let that sit over to the side for just a moment and dry. Now that those two are set over there and we're going to let them dry for a moment, we're going to go ahead and glue our hose hook up into the input elbow with the little Venturi straw on it. That's going to go into here where we add some glue to that and glue that together. So here we go. Nice ring of glue on the inside there. We'll stick that piece down in there, just like that. So there you go, we now have the hose hookup glued into our Venturi elbow. We'll set that down to the side, just let that cure for a brief second. Let's go ahead and grab the separation tank again. We're going to glue the output elbow here on the top of the output pipe. And that's going to go down right like this 
until you see it just like that. So let's go ahead and add some glue in there and we'll put those two together. All right, give me just a second, make sure I get this lined up nice so it looks good. All right, there we go. We now have the output elbow on the output side of our water flow on the separation tank ready to go. Let's let that cure for just a brief moment. So I'll let those set for just a moment so we could get them to cure. We're gonna go ahead and grab the input line right here. It's got the elbow for the bottom hookup already ready to go. Let's go ahead and glue the top elbow on there which has got the Venturi straw on it. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of glue inside of this. There we go, and make sure I get this lined up right. Hold on a second. All right, that looks good. Oop, just moved on me. All right, that looks good right there. Let's go ahead and let that cure. We'll grab this piece right here with our separation tank. We're gonna add a little bit of glue inside of this ring here, and then we're gonna glue down the compressor tank inside of it. All right, there's some glue. Let's stick the compressor tank down in there. Give it a couple turns. All right, so there we go. We now have our output pipe, our compressor tank, and all that glued onto the separation tank. The next thing that we're gonna need to do here is add a little bit of glue right here around the end. Go ahead and get that done. Try not to spill as much as I've been spilling so far on this cloth. All right, that looks like enough. Let's go ahead and grab the intake here. Let me make sure I can get this lined up right. We're gonna stick the two of them together. All right, that looks good right there. So there we go. We now have the input, the output, and the compressor tank glued into place. The last part of this is going to be gluing the little bit of an air output nozzle that we have right here to the hole in the top of the compressor tank. Let's go ahead and grab that little piece. We'll stick that right down inside of there just like that. And let's go ahead and make sure it's nice and straight. Right there. So there we go, guys. So let's go ahead and let this set up for a little while. We'll bring it outside and give it a good test. All right, guys. So we've got our tromp hooked up. We've got our water coming in here to the input. We've got a little stream of water coming out of the output. I had to tune the water flow just right. Otherwise, we're getting back pressure up out of the siphon straw. We've got a clear air line coming out of the top of our compressor tank. And so you can visualize the actual air coming out of the compressor tank. I put the end of that air line into a glass of water. So there you go, there's our little stream of bubbles bubbling out of our airline coming from our tromp. Nice little steady flow. So there you guys go, there's a 3D printed tromp in action. I had to tune everything just right. Like I said, you know, too much water, we were getting back pressure. Uh, too much of an airline opening, we were getting the water coming up into our air tank. So I had to put a little stick in the end of our airline. That way it doesn't overwhelm the pressure tank. But as you watch right here, just a nice constant stream of bubbles. Right there, coming out of our air compressor tank, being developed by gravity pulling water downhill, mixing that water with some air, and then compressing it down in the separation tank, and that's coming out of our compressor tank. And then we can actually visualize that with the stream of bubbles coming out into the glass of water. So you can see it's just a nice little constant stream. I hope you enjoyed. This was Mr. Tesslonian.